sometimes someone might come to me and they just want me to build them a website. And my point of difference is that I work with people that don't have big budgets, but they want to have an online presence. And I can help them and show them how to do that. Welcome to Jane Jackson Careers, a podcast that takes your career to the next level. Here's your host, Jane Jackson, author of Amazon Careers bestseller, Navigating Career Crossroads. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. You can get a free audiobook download and free 30-day trial at audibletrial.com forward slash Jane Jackson Careers. There are over 180,000 book titles to choose, so give it a go and get your free audiobook today from audibletrial.com forward slash Jane Jackson Careers. Welcome back to my careers podcast, where I interview fascinating professionals who are leaders in their field. Now, today, I'm really lucky to have back on the show for the second time, Deb Carr, who's ranked by cred as a top 5% influence in the online space. Now, she's got a passion for helping others build their digital profiles. She's worked with a diverse group of clients from small businesses to entrepreneurs and has a keen interest in developing digital marketing and social media campaigns for others. She's been so successful doing this. This is why I really want to have her back on the show again and have a chat in a minute. Now, Deb is the founder and editor of Sydney Chic. This is a lifestyle website about living in Sydney and she gets out and about everywhere. You should follow her Instagram profile because they're just the most beautiful photos in incredible places all over Sydney. She also writes The Jasmine in the Forest, a personal blog on inspiration and the Tranquil Forest, an e-commerce website selling handmade crafts by artisans in developing countries. And she has been marketing online since 2004. So let's welcome Deb back to the show and we'll have a good chat. Welcome, Deb. Hi, Jane. How are you? (laughs) Very well. I've been so looking forward to having a chat with you because honestly, your Instagram account right now has filled with amazing photos and events and you're on the boat out in the harbour and there's so much going on, especially in the lead up to Christmas here in Sydney as well. So tell us what's been going on in your life. Well, where do I start? I mean, that intro you gave me made me sound very busy. I, mean, I guess that's exactly <laughs> what I am. Well, don't pretend you're not busy. I know you are because I see everywhere that you go. <laughs> There's no hiding. Yes. So at the moment, I am busy with the blog that keeps me out and about on the IP red carpet most nights of the mm-hmm. week. It's not very good for my figure, actually. So I've started an exercise campaign on that one. So I write for Sydney Chic. So I've got a, obviously a big interest in Sydney. So that's part of my work. My other part of my work is that I help other people with their digital profile. So I might do their social media for them. I might build them a website, get them out and about, get them building profiles and teaching how to do social media and content creation. Mm, Okay. Now, how about before we get into more of the content creation and digital profiles, tell us some of the fun events you've been to most recently. Which two events have been just the most amazing that you've attended? Oh, wow. There's so many. I went to the opening of the Hyatt Regency in Sydney, I think it was last Thursday, and we turned up there at this beautiful hotel, which is just fantastic. And during the event, they said, okay, you're all going on to a a boat we're going to go across the harbour (laughs) so that was probably a great event I I really enjoyed that and another event that I did recently was to do what the plate farm I've got to get this right farm to plate where it was just an intimate little lunch with a few foodie bloggers and uh, we got to learn how you can track where the organic grain from your bread or your pasta is actually coming from and you can actually go and see the farmer online and find out where this food came from and I just thought that was fascinating. Wow that would be really interesting because I I have no idea about grains I just go to the supermarket and buy it. (laughs) Ah well now you can check it and I must say the one highlight I was just flown over to Thailand in October for about five days to cover a couple of hotels over there that was pretty cool. 
Mm-hmm. So interesting. So the Hyatt Regency, you hobnobbing out on the ocean in the harbour and farm to plate. And now you get invited to some of the most incredible events all the time. So obviously, a Sydney Chic blog is very well received and you get noticed everywhere. And I just have fun following all your posts because you never know where Deb Carr is going to turn up next. And so this year, it's actually just gone into the stratosphere with everything that you've been doing. Yeah, quite fun because I've got 21, 25 year old daughters, and the 25 year old says to me all the time, oh, Mum, you're out of control, you need to stay home a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny. But you know what, Jane, I do go to a lot of these events and it does look like I'm some hoity-toity sort of person, but honestly, I'm the most down person you can meet and I enjoy it, but it's fun. But my highlight is actually writing the content and creating the content. I love doing that. Yeah, yeah, actually, I agree. Having got to know you over the past couple of years, you are so down to earth. But also, because you've got a great profile here online, you're Mm. like a walking, talking testimony that the digital space is your area. And so with your business helping people marketing their businesses online, you're the perfect person. So tell us a little bit about your digital business. So, okay, sometimes someone might come to me and they just want me to build them a website. And My point of difference is that I work with people that don't have big budgets, but they want to have an online presence, and I can help them and show them how to do that cheaply, what I do, you can do, or otherwise they might get me to do it. So can I give you an example of a project I'm working on at the moment? Yeah, yeah, please do. So a very dear friend of mine, and actually the style editor for Sydney Chic, has asked me to build his new profile called styleguide.tv. And it's basically a a website that will also be a blog, so video blogging. And I've built the website. I've done the YouTube channel. I've created the Twitter channel. I've just about created the Facebook and we've got Instagrams already going. And so I've put together this whole big package for Style Guy, which is basically a rainbow family. So Glenn and his partner, Leo, live in Sydney and they have a... Glenn Co shares a little boy with Dante with his mum. And it's all about style. And they're the most stylish people I know. Wow. Okay. So, and tell me about this rainbow family. That's a beautiful term. Yeah, I guess, you know, they are a gay couple who, and Glenn obviously co parents with his son from a previous relationship. And this little boy, he's just a sweetheart. He's the most polite gorgeous little fella, but he's also the most stylish young man I've ever come across <laughs> in my life. He makes me look like a dad. He, like, he's so cute. And he's also very good in front of the camera. So we've got a couple of videos of this child cooking up a storm with Nutella and doing a few things, and we are about to really promote this. Hopefully by the end of the year we'll have a launch of it, maybe running out of time. It might have to be in the new year now. Yeah. Oh, that sounds really interesting. And how old is he? A6. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So he's cooking and he's stylish and he's like his dad and he's amazing. I like that name, styleguy.tv. Is that right? Yeah. 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 So uh, Glenn asked me, we were trying to get another URL and I was going through the crazy demands and I thought to myself, hang on, he wants to do blogging. Let's try and get TV. Mm. And it was available to my astonishment. So we grabbed that and we grabbed another URL as well. So we'll just point that both of them to the sites. Mm, how fantastic. So it's styleguy.tv to get to the website, but what about the Twitter handle and all the other social media handles? Just styleguy TV. Oh, Style Guy TV. Mm, okay, yeah. I'll put that in my show notes as well so we can oh, go thanks. and have a look because I think that'd be really interesting. And so, Deb, now this is interesting. You're talking about the video blogging, and I've read a lot about this video stuff, you know, that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger this year especially. What's your opinion on blogs versus video blogs or vlogs as you call it versus other ways to get your message out well jane i get asked this question quite a bit actually and for me personally sydney chic is my hub and from that hub i've got the twitter following and the facebook and the instagram and whatever else i do and the beauty with like Twitter now and Facebook and Instagram, we can all be TV stars because there's this live video content. And I think that's going to grow quite massively next year for brands themselves and big corporations and whatever because its potential there is huge to 
get your message across to other people. And in fact, last night I was at another event, of course, and I have a new manager myself. And I was there last night and I said to her, I better take an Instagram. And she said, oh, no, can you just do live story? And I went, oh, okay, that's easy. (laughs) So I just did a couple of live stories. Wow. You know, I I found that Facebook Live, all those live stories, they're starting to become more and more popular. And initially it was Snapchat with all of, you know, those live quick videos and then Instagram stories, Insta stories. And now there's Facebook Live. What do you think? Which is the best platform to be on or do we have to be on all of them? Because sometimes I get into overwhelm. And if I'm going to be doing a video, I'm thinking, now, should I put on my makeup first or should I just be natural? So I'd love your opinion on all of that. Yeah, look, personally, I use Twitter, I use Instagram and Facebook. Though I, I'll be honest, I'm going off Facebook because I think all they want is your money if you're a page. LinkedIn, I don't use as much anymore. So I concentrate on those three. Do you know what, Jane? Just be yourself. If you're going to take a video and you're out and about, like I was out at the yachts last week, we're looking atrocious, really. And I just <laughs> took a photo live video. Who cares? It's dead. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think with the videos, I have to admit, and my little secret is I have a tiny little selfie stick that's in my handbag all the time. But anytime I bring it out, everyone always goes, oh, Jane, put it away. (laughs) And they feel very very shy about it, but I'm quite happy to do it for myself. But sometimes people don't want to be videoed as well. But I've been watching people like Gary Vaynerchuk, who is always out there with his videos, whether he's walking down the street, he's in a taxi, he's on a plane, he's in his office. And it's really quite fascinating to watch them because it's almost like a sneak peek into the real way that people work. Yeah, I think so. But I guess the thing that I worry about sometimes is if we're all live videoing and we're all doing it at the same time, how are we all going to get to see any of it? Yeah, yeah, that's right, because it really is. There's so much content out there now. But I do like, you know, the short little snippets about 15 seconds. Oh, there you are. And that event or that show. And so you just get that little bit of a feeling of, oh, I'm there too. Or maybe it's a little bit of voyeurism just to see, you know, what's happening. But certainly just to get a taste of, oh, here's this event, or maybe it's a fashion week, or maybe, you know, someone is out on a boat on the harbour and, oh, it's a beautiful day. It's just a really nice feel-good factor, isn't it? It is. And I have to say, look, my favourite one is Instagram. It's just my favourite. And I've met some really great people just on Instagram, just people that approach me. And I had a young guy last night, he emailed me, and he said, you might know me from Instagram. I'm a photographer. I've just finished my tech course and is there anything I can do to help your blog and you know I thought good on you for reaching out so of course I emailed him back and said yeah let's do a story on this Mm. and another lady I met she followed me on Instagram and I followed her and she comes up and then one day I noticed she didn't have any hair so I went looking and this poor woman has gone through terrible time with breast cancer and we've actually become quite good friends just from that and You know, I get gifted a lot of products and I've sent her a few parcels down, the gifts that I've been given to review and whatever. And I just made a lovely friend just Mm. from social media. It's nothing to do with business. It's just, hey, hi, how are you? (laughs) Yeah. You know, one thing that's the difference, because I've also been learning about how to do this, is that I notice that when you make a genuine connection rather than just saying thanks or someone pushing out a whole lot of stuff that they're selling, Because if it's selling, I just tend to tune out. But if someone's sharing something that they're doing that I think, oh, that's really interesting. Oh, I've been there before. Then it's nice to comment. And sometimes it does turn into an online friendship in a way. And, you know, once I posted this picture, I was having a walk with my daughter from Bondi to Bronte. And this is four years ago, Deb. And I posted uh-huh. this picture on Twitter and I did a little hashtag, you know, beach, sunshine, sea, Bondi, Bronte. And someone in the UK picked up on it because she, maybe she was just looking at sunshine and it was really cold and miserable in the UK, but it was so warm and sunny in Sydney and she used to live here apparently. And she just started commenting on that one post or tweet that I'd made. And so I started tweeting her back. And just to cut a long story short, we found out that we 
she'd lived in similar cities in the past, and she had some Eurasian friends, and I'm half Chinese, half English. Then she pulled in a couple of other friends. She tagged them and got them into the conversation as well. And one thing led to another, and I ended up blogging on her website regularly in the UK, and she gets about fifty thousand hits a week on her wow. site. It's called Talented Ladies Club. It was amazing, and we've developed this friendship. And twice that I've been back to London, we've actually caught up and met face to face, and had podcast interviews. And I made this friend via Twitter, and it's a genuine friendship. And I was helping her; she's been helping me, and it's so nice. And actually, that young boy you said, or the photographer who contacted、yeah. you, he wasn't trying to sell anything. He asked you, "How could I help you, Deb?" Isn't、yeah. that lovely? I really like that way of making an approach. Yeah, it is, and and I've met some great people just through that sort of a connection. And, and you know, there's a lot of, of course, there's a lot of dark side of the social media, but、mm. I think there's a lot more brighter side. So it's just my life, really. Yeah,、why. yeah. So how do you structure your business now? Say if、um, someone's starting up in their business, or they've got an established business, and they really want to build upon their profile, but digital media does get a bit overwhelming for everybody at some stage or another. What do you do? Tell me your process. How do you take a business through to building their digital space? Well, obviously, the first thing. Let's just go back to style guide. Obviously, we have to get all the branding right, and everything has to look the same and the same message. And once we've got all the accounts set up, the hard bit is actually then sharing it all and getting the content to keep that moving and to get the followers. And I think that's the hardest thing to do. But I've got all the tools of the trade, so this is meant by run a training course. It's what I teach people: is there's a whole lot of stuff out there that you can schedule stuff, you can report, you get reports on. You can make fantastic graphics yourself now. You don't have to get a graphic artist. Obviously, I'm not. Of course, some things you would, of course, get a graphic artist. But there's a lot of stuff you can do yourself now, and it's about being consistent. And you've got to be doing it every day. Mm, yeah, I think the consistency is the hardest thing. I've become quite consistent myself, and I know. Like, oh, I watch you! <laughs> You're on Twitter a lot. <laughs> I love Twitter. I've made so many nice、do. friends on Twitter. It's, <laughs> it's good. But the thing is, is that at some stage you've got to make. Well, you need to have a face to face, whether it's via Skype or whether、yeah. it's you know having a coffee chat with someone. It's like it's good to get on someone's radar through Twitter or Instagram, and then after that to genuinely develop the relationship. But it's a good starting point, isn't it? Oh, definitely. And of course, face to face. But I used to be—I considered myself one of the biggest networkers in Sydney years ago, especially when I was running my speaking agency. But now, mostly online. It's quite funny. And, but in saying that, of course, if, when I'm out every night, I'm always meeting people. It's a different scenario. That it's not like I'm out networking for business. Now I'm just out networking, and I've, I've met some incredible people doing、mm. what I do. Yeah, yeah. I think the good thing about network, like I was—I mean, it's now Christmas, so there are so many events now, and they're、yeah. either networking events or they're just catch up for Christmas events. And last night I was down at the cruise bar, which is beautiful, and you know, oh gosh, it was a full moon, the water was really calm, and the blue looking across from the cruise bar over to the opera house—it was really amazing. I took some good pictures. Just have a look on my Instagram account. They're there, Deb. But I was meeting with all of these other coaches, and there were mindful leadership coaches, and executive coaches, and career coaches, and I'm a career coach, as you know. But just seeing everybody in one place and having a good chat, having a drink or two, and having a laugh was so nice. And we might not see each other for months after this, but it's just that connection. Every once in a while, that human connection is so important. Absolutely. I mean. Sometimes I get a little bit stir crazy because I work from home.、Mm. I mean, and it, but I'm a bit of a loner in that way too. I'm one of these people that very focused and I don't like interruptions. <laughs> I was a terrible manager, I have to tell you. <laughs> I admit it. Good leader, but bad manager.、Mm-hmm. And but you're getting out, and and the cruise bar is lovely. I'm actually going there tomorrow night because、mm. the big ship, you know, Ovation of the Seas, is in、yeah. Sydney tomorrow,、yeah. and I'm. Very lucky to be able to go on board tomorrow and check it out. Oh, how exciting! You know, actually, when I arrived last night, there was a big ship there blocking the view, and I thought, oh, okay, it's blocking the view. But then I thought it's really interesting just looking at how. Enormous these cruise liners are, and then while we were there, it actually left, and so we watched it sail away. And then there was that amazing view. It really was quite a magical moment watching, you know, this huge cruise liner disappear. So yeah, it's a great spot to go. And so, yeah, 
And so, Deb, now tell me, because, you know, like we've mentioned Style Guy TV a number of times, what's in store for Style Guy? Well, Style Guy, we want to make it an online e-commerce shop as well. So he'll be selling clothing, whether he'll do that with drop shipping or affiliate marketing. We're still figuring that one out. But that's one thing that we're going to do with Style Guy. And Style Guy is going to be a great place for men and women to go and find what's stylish, things to wear. I mean, he's responsible for this new blonde do of mine. <laughs> he, just, he just knows what to do. And we've gone out a couple of times and I've sent Leo and Glenn out for Sydney Chic mm. and they've been photographed and put in the paper. So, Oh, it's Style amazing. Guy is like, I'm very excited about Style Guy. Yeah, well, I'm glad he's – I mean, honestly, your new blonde hair is stunning. It's absolutely stunning. I saw a picture on Instagram. I thought, what's this? What's she doing? What's she doing? I thought this looks very, very chic. So there you go. And it's perfect for Sydney chic blog, isn't it? It is, definitely. Yeah, yeah very it's good. Perfect for that. <laughs> Well, I'm so glad that you had a chance to come back on the show because it was a year ago that I interviewed you all about yeah. your career journey. And that was just such an interesting conversation. And now things have just moved ahead so very, very well for you the past year. So you can be sure that I want to have you on again on the show in another year's time or even less. Depends on what you're doing. If suddenly you're doing something that I think, oh, what's this? What's this? Let me get um, <laughs> Deb Carr back on the show again. I hope you'll come. And can you also tell me the Tranquil Forest? Mm. What is this all about? Okay, so I decided that I'd like to have an online shop. And I built the website. probably took me two days, really three days. And then I stocked it up with thousands of products. But it's from Shopify. So Shopify is an e-commerce platform. And I'm doing what we call drop shipping. So I'm not actually handling any of the inventory myself i've got a reliable supplier over in america and all the products are fair trade so they've been made by women in nepal or artisans in countries that are developing and it's got such a good heart to it this business that i thought you know i would love to do that so that's what i'm doing Okay, I've only just launched it. It's not making a million dollars yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a start, though, but it sounds interesting that you could set it up in just a couple of days. You're mm. drop shipping, so you don't have to have a whole lot of stock in a warehouse or at home or no. wherever. And you've used Shopify, so I'm going to have to talk to you a bit more about this and find out exactly how you maybe can set up an online business. This way. That would be another good podcast, just yeah. focusing on setting up an online store. Yeah, yeah. and... You know, I had a few trial and errors with this one because originally I started to look at China. Obviously, China creates it and it's very cheap, but the delivery was too long. The packaging, obviously tested it myself by ordering stuff, was dreadful. And then I came across this site and I've already ordered my stuff, so I know that the products are really great and I'm very happy with this one. Oh, that's fantastic. So, Deb, if we want to follow you, I know, well, at Sydney Chic Blog is your handle on Twitter mm. and on Instagram as well. And then this one, The Tranquil Forest. What's the website there? The Tranquilforest.com. And mm. we've got sydneychic.com.au. And we've got the Jasmine in the forest.com and there's one more, Jay, Debcar.com. <laughs> Debcar. Oh well, I mean that's a bit obvious, Deb. Okay. <laughs> All websites. <laughs> you know, you're so lucky to be able to get your name as a .com. I've tried to get JaneJackson.com, but someone's parked it, and so I got oh. Jane Jackson Careers and Jane Jackson Coach. But it's so good when you can get your own name dot. So I'm glad that you've got that as well. So Deb, I'm going to put all of your links onto my show notes on my website at janejacksoncoach.com. And so people can follow you absolutely everywhere. And certainly I'm going to see how long this beautiful blonde hair stays. And it looks, honestly, I think you should keep it. It looks really, really good. And I know I'll see you all over at lots and lots of Christmas events as well. And Good luck with growing styleguy.tv and, you know, for all of the other clients that you're working with as well. And it's always such fun having a chat with you. And since you're ranked as the top 5% influencer in the online space, I'm really lucky that I got to catch you. Oh, well, you know, I've been on this online for a long time. <laughs> That's right. No hiding. <laughs> and thanks so much, Deb, and a very Merry Christmas to you. And may 2017 be fabulous. To you too, Jane. Thank you. Bye.
Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. You can get a free audiobook download and free 30-day trial at audibletrial.com forward slash Jane Jackson Careers. There are over 180,000 book titles to choose, so give it a go and get your free audiobook today from audibletrial.com forward slash Jane Jackson Careers. You've been listening to Jane Jackson Careers. Sign up to receive regular career advice at janejacksoncoach.com. 